May we have the time of confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. With that, may we all greet one another. May we be able to have the evidence of enjoying the gospel. With that, the title for today is The Joy of Following Jesus. Where does your happiness come from? What is your standard? People find their joy in Genesis chapter 36 and 11. They put their standard of their happiness in self-centered, materialistic-centered, and world-centered lives. But the feeling of joy from all of this will come soon and fade away. It will be like a fog, even if you have wealth, fame, and power. Strange enough, people cannot be satisfied. These days, there are issues regarding celebrities doing drugs. It's a great issue right now. Actor Sung Yun Lee from Parasite is well known for his acting. And he is very charismatic and I personally liked him well as well. He had a very good low voice and a kind reputation. And I was shocked at first when I first heard of it and it, it is such a pity. Not only him, but also GD, G Dragon, an idol singer from Big Bang, is being accused of drug abuse. What do they lack of? They have all the money and fame, but they are proving that there is no true happiness there. Then, where can we have true joy? Think about all the celebrities who are addicted to drugs. Like Marley Marlowe in her 40s. She had great fame because there is no satisfaction to the point where we cannot know where is true happiness and joy? It's in today's title. We will find it when we follow Jesus. Even if you are stubborn and make excuses, there's no use. The happiness in this world is just temporal, but the joy of following Jesus is eternal. When you see Hebrews 13e, it reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. 2,000 years ago, today, he's the same to those who believe. Everything in the world changes. People's feelings, thoughts, circumstances, ideas, philosophy, cultures, and religions will all change one day. This is the reason why holding on to the worldly things is like holding on to a rotten rope. It will one day break. Yesterday, today, eternally the same. Jesus is the only one who is the same forever. That's why we say only hold on to Jesus Christ. Find the answer in only Jesus Christ. Just hold on to Jesus Christ as there is true happiness and joy within that. So what is the walk of faith? Living a walk of faith defines experiencing true joy while following Jesus. There may be some of you who have went through so many things in the world. So you probably had a conclusion saying, oh, believing in Jesus is the best thing. But those who have 
never done that. And they just grew up in the church diligently. Some of them did not experience the gospel, the power of the gospel. Those who were drenched in Genesis chapter 3, they realize how important the seed of the woman is. That's why we say that person is full of grace. The walk of faith should not be complicated. The walk of faith is not complicated. It's not something that God makes us go through in difficult times. If you set one absolute goal in your life, then it is not that hard. That is the joy of following Jesus. Why is following Jesus difficult? It's not. Not only the standard of happiness, but every standard in your life should be Jesus Christ. It is not fame. It is not where you are in position-wise. As soon as your life comes to a conclusion with Jesus Christ as a solution of every little problem, you'll be able to go closer to enjoyment, the true enjoyment. No matter what situation you are in, you'll be able to start true enjoyment. Those who are not resoluted in this, what happens? If you touch upon their pride a little bit, they will shake. Yes, we can risk our lives and die for our friends, but touching upon pride is a different matter. There are pastors who risk everything for this upper room movement, but when their pride is hurt, it is like a fog. If they're not resoluted, people's lives are very complicated. And their lives are always confused of not knowing what to do. But why can you not enjoy it while believing in Jesus? Why do you not have true joy? Why do you have so many conflicts? Why can you not receive grace? There is only one reason. It is because you did not completely conclude your life with the gospel. Before blessings, before success, for those who have not been resoluted, may you be able to pray, Lord, may I be able to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer to all my problems. May I be able to realistically believe that Jesus Christ is the answer to all my problems. If you cannot believe it, you'll go crazy, especially in our church. For other churches, it's okay because they don't really speak about Christ, but our church, it'll be difficult to stand because we're continuously speaking of only Christ because we're continuously lacking that 2% that is lacking. You feel unsatisfied. So you keep on looking onto other things. What happens if you drive and look the other way? You'll have an accident. You must look forward on the road. It's the same thing in your spiritual life. Only Christ, only kingdom of God, only the filling of the Holy Spirit. If this happens and if this takes place, it is finished. No matter what happens, it doesn't matter. These three onlys must complete your life. May you be resoluted upon these three onlys. May all human church believers live the walk of faith knowing how great the love of Christ is and how deep, wide, and long it is, realizing that all treasures of wisdom and knowledge is within Christ, the mystery of God, the great blessings that lies within this. There is healing, wisdom, all knowledge lies within Jesus Christ. 
You must know this within Christ. You must realize this. Knowing how great and amazing the love of God is. Knowing the depth with height of this love. Paul realized of this love. Physically, he went through hardships after, but spiritually, he was filled with joy of knowing about God daily. Are all Christians the same? The depth, height, and length is all different. So, what did he say? You should go to the level of swimming inside the river of life, not just dipping your feet into the walk of faith. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you may all stand as the main figures of possessing all the nations and tasting the true joy of following Jesus. Swimming within the ocean of grace. So you may be able to taste the joy of of following Jesus and be the main figures of possessing all the nations. Number one, the historical witness of the gospel movement. Verses 14 to 15. John the Baptist who worked before Jesus to prepare the way of Jesus, rebuked King Herod's family for their wrongdoings, serving as an excuse for him to be imprisoned. After this incident, John the Baptist's ministry came to an end and Jesus' public ministry had begun. Looking at the history in the Bible, John the Baptist is seen as the last prophet of the Old Testament. In other words, the old age of the Old Testament has passed and the new age of the New Testament has come to an open. That's what it means. Jesus speaks of this change in the times with the expression, the time is fulfilled. The word representing time in the passage is Kairos. It is not just Kronos, which means the natural time that just flows by, but rather it is a time schedule that contains God's special meaning of salvation. It means that the time schedule of salvation has come near. In other words, the time schedule for Jesus to work concretely has now arrived. The characteristic of a person who achieves spiritual growth and experiences true answers in his or her walk of faith is that he or she can see the time schedule of Karyos. Those who have the eyes that are open to see how God works in the sage. There's a reason why it is important whether these eyes are open or not. No matter how passionate you are about taking on the challenge, what will happen if the direction and timing is not right? The harder you work, the more you end up in a completely different direction, totally irrelevant to the answer. It's just like beating a dead horse every day. No matter how much you wave after a bus passes, it is meaningless, and this is what you are doing if you are doing so. Then how can we see the time schedule of Karyos? It's not difficult at all. All you have to do is follow the stream of the pulpit. Pulpit 24 hours. All you have to do is follow the words that God gives you every year and every week through the pulpit. May all the nations be possessed is the message that will be answered intensively for the year 2023. As the title of today's message suggests, your life should experience the happiness of following Jesus Christ throughout the week. 
If you experience the happiness of following Jesus, you will stand as a witness who will possess all the nations. The 237 elders, they have picked the nation, so they are praying for that nation. How beautiful is it? The remnants who hold on to that nation and pray for that nation. We hear the testimonies of the remnants and the elders. I told you on Friday as well, I went to Spain. And one young adult there, I asked, how are you here? And he said, I went to Greece. Why did you go to Greece? And he said, I picked my nation as Greece. And, I, that, and that's why I went. How long were you there? And he said I was there for three weeks. And he picked out Greece as his true three seven nation, and that's why he went to Greece for three weeks. I thought, wow, that's really Yemen DNA. They don't even know where the country is, but the remnants, they pray for that country, whether you go or send, by prayer. It's saying that they will do world evangelization. They're within the time schedule of God. How lovable is that? God fulfills the word that he gives for that new year as well as the word that he gives us every week. May all the nations be possessed. We are receiving this answer in the year 2023. And like today's title, the joy of following Jesus. So it's saying, this week, may we be able to follow Jesus. There is no need to think too hard. If you think about it too long, it's difficult. So just live following the flow of the church. Within that, there is true joy. Don't go the opposite way, but follow. There is true joy in that. It is the word given to you to be able to taste this. May you be able to experience this lifelong. Then you'll be used as the one who possesses all the nations. Don't think about it too hard. The walk of faith must be simple. It must be simple. For those who are very complicated, they go crazy. The Bible is very simple. What is interesting is that one of the characteristics of the book of Mark that we are examining every Sunday is that compared to other books of the Bible, of the gospel, it is very simple. Why? Is that the paragraphs are not long. It takes the form of a summary of the key points. Theologians found the reason in Peter. This is because the author Mark followed Peter and recorded the messages that he had proclaimed and mentioned. One can say that Peter was poorly educated. He didn't have a lot of education. He doesn't have a lot of specifications in his background. So that is why he didn't have a long speech. He was unable to do so. He was simple. His speech was very simple. However, his passion toward the gospel was greater than anyone. He made some mistakes and was confused at some points, but he hated for his love towards Jesus Christ and his passion for the gospel to fall behind. This kind of affection for the gospel, which was also quite simple, is implied in the book of Mark. 
I wish that this will also soak into your lives as well. When Jesus started his public ministry, the first thing that he did was preach the gospel of God as it is written in the scripture. Mark didn't speak of just the gospel, but spoke of the gospel of God. I once told you the reason why. Do you remember? Why did he say it was the gospel of God? At that time, evangelion, evangelism is a word that means the gospel. It was a word that was daily used at the time. The definition of the word is good news, and the people used to this word to send messages of victory in a war or news about the new emperor at the time. When the new emperor emerged, some prisoners were released and servants and citizens received commemorate gifts or special meals. It was really a good time for people to experience joy in so many ways. That's what it means. However, Mark used the phrase, the gospel of God, to emphasize the eternal good news that God gives rather than the temporal good news that Caesar shared. Jesus preached what the gospel of God is, and he said, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That's what it was said. We shouldn't live under Caesar's rule anymore, but live a life under the control of God. This is the start of Jesus' ministry. The core of the message is to turn back from your old life and believe in Jesus Christ as the gospel, completely turning away from that life. This means that you should change your master, the owner of your life. It's not yourself, it's not Caesar. But it is Jesus Christ. It's that we don't change our master, that we have conflicts and we don't have answers to prayers. And you compare, have thoughts of inferiority, have panic attacks, schizophrenia, insomnia, depression. What we must see is that Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom of God as soon as he came to the world. That's all that he did. The kingdom of God. That's what he preached of. This is a life that we should follow. Why am I living? Is it to eat three meals? Is it to make your children be successful? Yes, that is needed. But what is the purpose of your life? It is that you're living for the gospelization of the kingdom of God. Are you not living for that? I am risking my life and going all in for my children. Is that so? What is important is your priority. You first must change your priorities. As for the kingdom of God and I will help all things, is what God said. You must be able to experience that in your walk of faith. We should become the main figures of this gospel movement. Being in the forefront of this, Pax Romana, the time of Roman peace, was over a long time ago. It has long passed. Pax Britannica was a time when Britain colonized so many countries, but this was also over. 
Nobody knows when Pax America will end, which means the U.S. grabbing hold of world peace. According to a recent report by the New York Times, the armed conflict that began with the attack on Israel by the, by the Palestinian armed fraction Hamas is a <clears throat> symbolic event that shows that the power of the United States in the international community is not the same as before and that the world is changing into a multipolar system. Multipolarization means that the center of the world is in the disruption of power in intellectual politics and is divided into several branches. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and China's pressure on Taiwan shows that the United States is no longer the dominant power as it was once before. However, no matter how the world order changes, there is only one fundamental order of spiritual peace. It is the peace system created by Jesus Christ. Pax Christiania. We must unfold the era of absolute peace that comes through the power of Jesus Christ. This is the evangelization of the 237 countries and 5,000 people groups. And the channel of this answer is the Team of Three movement. God's time schedule for the historical answer lies within this. When we ride the spiritual stream, we can experience true happiness. All believers of Yemen Church, I hope that this November you will take on the challenge of one more time to make the soul that you embraced in your heart to root down in worship and in church. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will stand proudly as a historical witness of the gospel movement. Number two, the life of the evangelists that are fishers of men, verses 16 to 18. The first thing Jesus said after proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God was raise disciples. As he was passing by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon Peter and his brother Andrew catching fish and he said to him, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. We have to know what this means. We have heard of this so many times that we take it naturally. The life of a spiritual fisherman who saves people is the life of a disciple. However, these words must have been shocking to Peter and Andrew who were catching fish at that time. You might have wondered about what this meant. But what's really interesting is that they didn't ask any questions about Jesus' call, but immediately left their nets and followed him. Jesus was way younger than them, and they did not even know who he was. That's what you might think. But what's really interesting is that they were working, but upon the words of Jesus saying, follow me, they did not even ask, questioning, who are you? If I follow you, will you feed me? What about my family? They did not even ask one question. They immediately left their nets and they followed Jesus. In verses 19 to 20, James and John, the sons of Je Jeopardy, immediately obeyed Jesus' words and followed him. Mm -hmm. 
leaving the father and all the workers. They just followed him. Immediately. What would you have done? Maybe you would have said, Lord, please give me just a week. Let me think about it. Let me pray about it. Let me talk about it with my family. A hundred percent of people would have said that. From a human perspective, it may seem very unreasonable. But not in front of the Word of God. Following Jesus does not mean weighing things, calculating profit and loss, and then taking action. The same goes for me. I was having a good business, and I could not even tell anyone because I was so embarrassed. Saying, telling me to go to seminary. I was evangelizing and doing my walk of faith diligently. Maybe if I failed in business, I wouldn't say anything, but I was doing the most tithes. But immediately, I obeyed. But one day, God told me, go to Seoul. I did not even know anywhere in Seoul. I prayed on Friday, and he told me to sell my house. I told my wife, we have to sell our house, because God told me to go to Seoul. Maybe my wife would have said, are you crazy? But no, she did not do that. Following Jesus does not mean weighing things, calculating profit and loss, and then taking action. The moment you hear the word, you must live a life of immediate obedience. Family meetings? It's already over. Within that, Satan will work. That's how I was guided and I'm standing here right now, not listening to the words of people, family. Because when I realize the word of God, immediately I take action. Please follow after me the life of immediateness. That's the own DNA. That's the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That is the form of a disciple. That is the life of the Bible, the Holy Spirit. The moment you hear the word, you must live a life of immediate obedience. In particular, what Jesus wants from us is not our background or knowledge. Don't question, do I have the right to do that? The disciples did not have any right. You don't need that. Why? Because God has power. He doesn't need our power. It's so strange. Throughout all the world, think about Pastor Yong Gi Cho. Did he graduate from a prestigious college, university? the pastors who were very influential in Korean Christianity. Pastor Yu. Or the other pastors who are doing their ministry. Don't ask their personal backgrounds. They have nothing to boast about. If they are boastful and prideful, they are mentally off. But it's that they are 
always spiritually alert. Spiritually and mentally, they're very healthy. Them saying, oh, I'm so tired. There is a reason for that. What power do I have? How can I? What right do I have? I don't have anything. If you start with I, then there is no answer. Please don't worry about at all whether I'm qualified or not. What Jesus wants is only the attitude of immediate obedience. If you look closely at today's word, when Jesus called his disciples, he did not tell him to become the fishers of men. He said, I will make you fish. He did not tell them to become the fishers of men, but he said, I will make you become fishers of men. Being a disciple depends on Jesus. All you have to do is follow him. All we have to do is this. I will make you become fishers of men. Being a disciple depends on Jesus. All we have to do is follow Jesus. Following the word, following the gospel following the schedule of the church. Why do you have to calculate upon the church schedule? The church is guided by the Holy Spirit, so all you have to do is follow the schedule. If you follow Jesus, we are only supposed to follow Jesus. There was nothing else that the disciples did during Jesus' public ministry but to follow him. There was nothing that they did otherwise. All you have to do is follow him. All you have to do is follow the word as the word is Jesus. The amazing work of revival of the early church began by the disciples with their obedience to the words of God. The words of Jesus. Jesus did not say to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Holy Spirit that the Father God had promised. He said that when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power and become the witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. According to these words, the disciples received the Holy Spirit gathering in Mark's upper room, praying on the day of the Pentecost. From then on, they all stood as the main figures of bringing about unimaginable changes in the field. Just as the word says, they all became witnesses. Now Jesus is telling us as well, I will make you become fishers of men. All you have to do is obey. I will make you fishers of men. Dear Yewon believers, you can respond to this voice by Amen. All you have to do is carry out the Team of Three movement. If you look at the status of Evangelism for Evangelists of Teams of Three, the evangelism rate after submitting the application is less than 30%. Even if you include the number of evangelists who did not submit the application, but those who evangelized, the total inflammation rate is less than 50%. If you haven't tried it yet, you can do it now. If you take immediate action, change will take place. All you have to do is obey, follow. The spiritual the spiritual paradigm shift is bound to occur. I bless all believers of Yohan Church in the name of the Lord that you will live a wonderful life as the evangelists who are fishers of men of the sage. This is the conclusion. In the refrain of hymn 
337, the lyrics read, I must tell you, Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. In fact, these lyrics are not correct from a gospelized perspective. Why do you have to carry the heaven burden until you collapse? Jesus Christ has already taken on all the burdens of our life. Do you think Jesus will give you salvation only when you collapse on the floor? No. He has already bared all the burdens of life, and that's why he said to tell us Ty. It is finished. There is no need to struggle. Do you think this is all a lie? I was resolute in this 30 years ago. There was no answer in this before. Jesus is the Christ answer to all problems. To tell us time it is finished, that day it has ended. There is nothing that you have to go through that is of a difficult burden. If that is so, that is a religious life. It is not the biblical walk of faith. Don't be fooled. I hope you experience true peace that is found in Jesus. I hope you experience the absolute happiness of following Jesus. Therefore, I bless all believers of Yohan Church in the name of the Lord to stand proudly as the historical witnesses of the gospel movement and as the evangelists who catches people. Let us pray. Dear Father God, throughout this week, may you be able to taste the joy of following Jesus. May, the, may we immediately obey and follow the Lord, being the main figures of the three movements. Upon the word of the pulpit, may we not listen to it as the words of man, be, but be able to have true evidence in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.